Hey there, Benoit here, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the Business of Everyday podcast. My earnest desire is that our time together each week would encourage, inspire, and equip you to live each day of your life graciously to the glory of God. Is there evidence that God answers prayers? To me, that is an emphatic yes, that God answers prayers. But as we talked about in the episode where we spoke on the key to effective prayer, it was said that an effective prayer is that which is based on what God has said in his word. And for that matter, if we must pray, we must do that by faith. For scripture says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Throughout scriptures, anywhere God gave a promise for something to be done for his people, we recognize that there's also some condition to that promise and which the intended recipients of that promise must adhere to. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. John 15, 7. 1 John 3, 22 also echoes this truth, saying that we receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. So today we are talking about, is there evidence really that God answers prayers? Now let me bring on my guest for today and we'll take it from there. Hi, Frank. Thank you so much for joining me again today uh, to talk about this subject on prayer. How are you? Hello, Deb. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so grateful and honored to be here today. I'm mm -hmm. very fine. I hope you're also fine. <laughs> we thank God for strength today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, let's just jump into it. I mean, earlier in my brief intro, I was talking about, for me, it is like an emphatic yes that God answers prayers. And as we proceed, there are certain things that I'm going to be sharing uh, with all of us to, you know, back whatever um, I said earlier. But let me begin with you. What is your thought or what answer can you give to the question? If someone asks you, is there really evidence that God answers prayers? Okay, thank you very much. Um, God answers prayers, as you rightly said. When we look into the word of God, God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, he said that call on me and I will answer. So God telling the prophet that whenever you call on me, the response is that I will answer. Mm -hmm. So whenever we ask anything from God in prayer, he will do it. And right. one thing about God is that, you see, it's not just about the promise, but the Bible says that God has exalted his word even mm -hmm. above his name. Mm -hmm. If the name of Jesus or the name of God is able to cast out devils, heal the sick, and perform miracles, and God is saying that he has exalted his word, which means that the word of God is so powerful. That is why he said in the book of Numbers that God is not a man that will lie mm. or say a word and change his mind. Right. So God is always bound by his word. God is always bound by his word. So if God tells us that we should call on him and he will answer, and not only answer, but show us things which are hidden. It means that God is a prayer answering God. Mm. He answers our prayers. He knows our needs. He knows. And one thing I will also add up is that, you see, all the things that we ask God in prayer is not actually what we need, but it is what God actually puts in our heart. Mm. Those are the things that we pray for. Right. So God places certain burdens in our heart. God creates some needs in our hearts so that we will call on him for him to answer so it means that before god will place a burden in your heart it means that he has already provided a solution to that request awesome you know and what you just said just uh, point to what is in proverbs that as we delight ourselves in the lord he gives us the desires of our heart and sure. here, you know, sometimes we are like, okay, everything that I want, um, God is going to give to me. But I realized that it is not really about want. It yes. is really about what we need. And we as need. we delight ourselves in the Lord, we realize that we surrender our will and everything to him. So we begin to yearn for things that the Lord yearns for. We begin to love the things that the Lord loves. We begin to do the things that the Lord put on our hearts to do. 
and we do not have taste for the former things that we were once interested in. And I, I believe that as the scripture says, it is because we are delighting in the in the Lord that now we realize that we are receiving the things that, you know, we are praying about. It's it's basically no. because God has put his desires in our hearts because we are getting closer to him and even our human relationships. Once you get close to someone, you realize that both of you start doing things like the same. You start yes. sometimes yeah. you start picking up some words that the person uses mostly when sure. you know you, you are talking and it's no wonder that at a point people were speaking of the disciples that had been with jesus that they saw them and they, they were like yes these people had really been with jesus because i believe that they couldn't just differentiate jesus from all of them and even with judas even judas that we know that betrayed jesus I believe based on what the scripture says that he had to kiss Jesus before the people recognized that this is Jesus. Because even at that point, all of them, the disciples, they were all looking like Jesus. They acted like yeah. him. So it had to be differentiated by a kiss. Then they'll know that, no, this is the person that we are talking about. And so all that I'm saying is leading me to the point where I still believe prayer or see prayer to be a relationship with God. The more we get close to him, the more we become like him. So yes. as we become like him, he puts his desires in our hearts and we pursue hard after those things. Sure, 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 sure. And let me also add this one, that, um, you see, as I earlier said in our previous um, episode, mm -hmm. I said that prayer is a relationship. Right. You see, it's a call for relationship. And through prayer, we journey in God. You see, there are levels that we get to in God. You see, you may start as a beginner, but you, as you journey in prayer with God, God takes you to a level. And one of the levels is that you get to know the mind of God. Mm. As said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, right. it says that for who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, who? The Lord. But we have the mind of Christ. Mm. So it means that, he said that who knows the mind of God? Who has known the mind of God? So we journey to a certain realm where we know the mind of God. We tap into the mind of God. So we pray not according to our will, not according to our feelings, not according to our own wants and needs, but mm. we tap into the mind of God and we instruct God to do certain things. So it means that when we are able to tap into the mind of God, that is when we are able to instruct God. You see, we command right. the power of God to do certain things for us. Mm. But the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. So we must journey to that level where we have the mind of Christ inside of us. Mm. That is when everything that we say, we will pray or we ask for, it will be answered just like that. Even your wishes is answered. Even yes. some of the things that you say casually, you say something just casually and mm. that thing will happen mm. because you have tapped into the realm mm. where you know the mind of Christ. Yeah. That's right. Awesome. So um, let me ask you, in terms of um, evidence or um, talking about God answering prayers, we cannot talk about this without, you know, being specific on certain things that we've known God to do in our lives or in the life of other people that we are connected to or even in scripture. Are there some records that you'd want to share with us even as we talk about this subject? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of proofs that God answered prayer. Mm. Um, let me start with Hannah. Okay. Hannah in the Bible. When you read First Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says that there was a woman who didn't have a child because the Lord has closed her womb. Mm. And then the Bible says that after sacrifice, Hannah prayed unto God. And then he said that, God, if you are able to give me a son, I will dedicate the son to you. And after the prayer, the Bible said that a year after Hannah came back with a son, mm. even though the Lord himself has closed her womb, the Lord opened it because of her prayer. Right. And there was a man called Jephthah also in the Bible. The Bible said that before he went for war, he said that God, if you give me victory, whatever welcomes me or whoever welcomes me after I return in victory, I will sacrifice that thing to you. And the Bible said that God answered his prayer and then he came back victorious. And then there was a, another man called Jabez. The mm. Bible said that out of pain, his mother gave birth to him. So he was pain. His life was pain. But the Bible said that, and Jabez prayed to the God of heaven. Mm. And then the Bible said that 
God turned his captivity. God heard him. And then he became more honorable than his brethren. So mm -hmm. there is a, a lot of evidence that God answers prayer. There are a lot of them that God answers prayer. Even when you read Daniel chapter 10, verse number 12, mm -hmm. the Bible said that Daniel fasted for 21 days. He fasted for 21 days to seek the face of God. And then after the 21 days, an angel came. And then the angel told him something that from the first day that you set your heart, to pray or to seek the face of God, I was released to come with your answer. So it means that whenever we set our heart to pray to God, our answer is being released by God. Mm, mm, so mm. God answers our prayer. He's a prayer answering God. You see, John Wesley says something. He said that it looks as if God does nothing except answering believing prayers. Answering believing prayers. Mm. You see, that is the agenda of God. It looks as God does nothing except answering believers' prayers. Mm. So if we believe in God and we pray to God, he is prayer answering God. Mm, wonderful. You know, as we talk about prayer and you were mentioning something about the prayers of believers, like the quote you just used. Um, John Wesley. Okay, the quote you used by John Wesley. And it's like, it looks as if God does nothing but to respond to believing prayers. Yes. So to that point, it leads me to James 5.16. And this scripture really fascinates me. And it says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And sure, so sure. just this, you know, this scripture, there's so many things that is telling me. And first of all, I am a righteous person in Christ. Christ yes. Jesus has made me by his sacrifice on the cross righteous. And so I can walk in that power that my prayer because i'm a righteous person through christ is powerful and effective and if sure. something is effective it means the thing is straight to the point like it, it hits the targets and so if sure. i'm praying for something and i receive answers to that prayer that means that my prayer has been effective sure. but the thing sure. is the thing is as long as we are believers we need to come to the place of understanding that it is not about God is not answering my prayers. That is negating what scripture has said. Because the Bible says that the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. I mean, there are so many yes. other things that come into play when we talk about um, receiving answers to prayers. And that has nothing to do with God and everything to do with us. But we are not talking about that today. So continuing sure. from what I said, I think the problem here is that we mostly go into the place of prayer with this um, heart posture of this is what I want. And so we are unwilling to see things through the through the eyes of or the perspective of Jesus Christ. So yes. if scripture tells us that the prayer of the righteous person is effective and powerful, that mm. also tells me that prayers are answered. And sometimes yeah. it is not what we expect. And so sometimes it's a no. And sometimes it's a wait a while. And sometimes yes. it's a yes. And sure. so depending sure. on the posture of our hearts, we get this, you know, response, but we are unable to really translate it well because we've tuned our mind to a limited view of God. That if I don't get what I'm looking for exactly the way I'm looking for it, then that means God hasn't answered my prayers. Maybe mm. he's like, wait a while. If I give you yes. this thing right now, it's going to destroy you. And that's the love sure. of a father. Maybe he's saying that, no, this thing is not good for you. I have something better for you. Maybe he's saying that, okay, in just a little while, I'm going to give to you. Just work with what I've given to you right now. And when the time comes, I'm going to give it to you. So if we really um, look at things from the point where scripture is saying that the righteous person is powerful, like the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, then we wouldn't go to the point where we are worried about or we have, in quote, questions or, you know, issues with God because he has not answered our prayers and we are giving him attitude like what we do. <laughs> When we ask our parents for certain things and they are not giving it to us, like sometimes when they want us to do something, I mean, we give them some sort of attitude and that shows how immature we are in our work. Sure. Um, coming from, you know, a personal relationship with God, we're in, in the place of prayer, as we earlier said, that prayer is communication with God. And the more you get personal with him, the more you understand him, the more you, you know how he works and the more you know how he speaks to you. I'm very glad that anytime we are starting a session, I mean, a prayer that you you often say is that Jesus says that his sheep hear his voice. The voice of a sure. stranger, they are not going to listen to. 
And so it comes from the point of relationship with the sheep and the shepherd. Yes. So if we know our father, when he speaks to us, we know that, no, my father wants the very best for me. So even if he's, he's not giving it to me right now, it does not mean that he has not answered my prayer. I want to talk about um, some personal things that I believe that God has through prayer established in my life. And when I say this, I use my very life as an example. Like I'm a complete testament of answered prayer by God. Because yes. without God, I don't see myself where I am. Without God, yeah. I am nothing. And so it is sure. by him, by his grace, his mercies, like everything that he is that I am. And when we talk of prayer, sometimes we are thinking about, you know, like, Moses was leading the Israelites out of captivity from Egypt and they get to the Red Sea, the Red Sea parts. Sometimes we are looking for answered prayers and we don't think about the very little works like God, as the scripture records that even the slippers that the people were wearing through the, the period, that long period in the wilderness, it didn't, uh, it, it didn't wear off. That, that slippers that they were wearing all through, imagine 40 years, right now you buy slippers and not even up to a year it gets spoiled. But these people walk through the desert because God was with them every day, taking care of their needs. Even when they are unfaithful, God was still with them, protecting and providing for them. And they didn't lack the basic necessities of life. And when it came to also the big things God did for them, we are walking with God daily. And every day as we have breath, it is an answered prayer. Every day as we walk, you know, this journey of life, it is an answered prayer. In fact, uh, our lives, as you already said, our lives is uh, as a result of God answering prayers. I remember when I was in SHS and then I realized something that in my family, nobody has been able to uh, get to university. Mm. So I had to pray when I realized that I knew that it was my turn because personally, I realized that when I was getting to the third year in SS, my academics were declining my mm. performance was coming down. So that time, I was a fresh believer. So I realized that this thing is coming at me. So I needed to do something. So I prayed, I prayed, I prayed with all my heart that I am going to pass and then I'm going to enter into university. No cutting corners, no North Deck, nothing. Mm. I have to go straight away. And by the grace of God, after SHS, the following year, you know, those times, you have to wait for one year for your results to right, come. Right, yeah. So after the following year, the results came. I applied for university and I got admitted. And by the grace of God, I completed the next four years. So it's God answering prayers. Right. I know that God answered my prayers. If God has not answered my prayers, I know that those cases would have followed me. This is, there are things that happens in your life that you know. You know that this is God. This is God, this is, yes. Yeah, this is God. You cannot ascribe it to your strength or your abilities you know definitely that this is god so whenever we pray we know that god answers us mm, right <laughs> right yes i mean when you mentioned the um there are certain things that it happens to you and you're like this is god like yeah. the kind of this is god moment sometimes i sit down most mostly in the quietness of, you know, my space, I sit down and I'm overwhelmed by all these things that you, you like, you, you even think about who is man. David would say that who is man that you are so mindful of. Sometimes you look sure. at certain opportunities that God brings your way and you know that you are not connected to, you know, I mean, in this part of our world where everything is by connections and who knows you, not even about whom you know, who knows you. Sometimes yes. you get certain opportunities and looking at where you're coming from, you, you don't know how this happens. And you, sure. you just go like, this is God. This is God. Sure. This is God. You're so, you're so overwhelmed by God's goodness. And so, I mean, if there's someone listening to us today and you are thinking that, does God even answer prayers? Does God even hear me? Scripture is saying, and both of us, myself and Frank, our very lives are just testaments of God's goodness you know answered prayer from god and so let me just share this i mean sometimes i like to talk about we are talking about our walk with god and sometimes I, I want to just bring it to the very basic levels not looking at so big of a things that you know sometimes we look at so big of a thing that god has done like god has raised the dead or god has given me some unknown money in my account like there's something big that I'm looking for. And so if we don't experience some of these things in our life, which is only a matter of time, 
if we don't experience these things in our lives, like we forget God's goodness and faithfulness in our lives and we become better and we start to compare ourselves to other people whose walk with God is even different from our walk with God. He's the same sure. God, but he doesn't deal with us the same way he deals with, you know, everyone. We are uniquely yeah. made by God. And so how God deals with us is strictly according to our relationship with him. And so if we are talking about prayer and God answering prayers, I believe that it is so much personal. I remember a time when I just moved from, um, I moved into a new place and at that time I didn't have water. And so um, there are so many things. I mean, in the beginning of things, everything is just, you know, scattered, chaotic and all that. And so I didn't have a whole lot of things, but I wanted to start doing some cleanup so that I can start moving my things inside. And I realized that there was a well, not the old typical well that we know of, but it is some sort of um, storage space that has been made like a well. And so you'd have to oh, lower yeah. a bucket with a rope into it to draw the water. And man, <laughs> the last time I remember doing that was in um, secondary school when, you know, there was a well. So if you are not able to compete at the borehole or when the tap is not flowing, you have to find your way to the well to draw water to save yourself from being late and all those things. So I, I just stood by the well and I was like, <laughs> today <laughs> it will be funny here. So I lowered, <laughs> I lowered the thing. I stood there for almost like 30 minutes going to an hour. I put the thing, I lowered the thing into, into um, that storage thing. And then just a little comes to, I was just fetching like a bucket full. I put the thing in, it's just a small thing that comes out. <laughs> it was even funny when I was saying that prayer, I just said, Holy Spirit, please help me draw this water. And when I just said it, I just lowered the thing into it. And <laughs> when I was lifting the thing, I couldn't even, you know, lift it because it was so full. And I was like, oh, wow. Sometimes some people classify some prayers as some stupid prayers. <laughs> yeah. There's something, you just say it and then the thing happens for you. And that tells me that God is very much involved in the little things that we do as much as the big things. And so whatever it is that, you know, we want him to do or as long as it matters to us, it matters to him. And so he yeah. helped me fetch that water. There are many times that I'll, I'll be stepping out from my place, going to work, and then I'll pray the prayer. Lord, let circumstances adjust to accommodate my presence. Not because of me, but because you are with me. And I literally sure. see this prayer unfold as I go. I mean, you go and meet a long queue, people struggling for a car, and then I'll go and stand there, and a car will just come and stand in front of me, and I'll just squeeze my, you know, some of us, because of our size, so we are able to squeeze through easily. So a car will just come and stand in front of me, and I'll just squeeze through, and I'll, like, I'll look back and look at all the people around there, and I'm like, oh, wow, thank you, Jesus. Answered prayer for me is, is really uh, my personal relationship with God, like doing every day with Him, like asking for His mind, His wisdom constantly. I'm just saying thank you, Lord, because I know that this thing is just you. I couldn't have just done this by my own strength because by sure. strength, even Bible says that no man shall prevail. And so for me, sure. when we are talking about answered prayer, I want us to really bring ourselves down to the point where we know that our walk with God is a daily walk. And you know, they say that it is the little um, drops of water that makes a mighty ocean. If I've seen sure. God respond to maybe basic prayers, like help me draw water from this well, and tomorrow yeah. I ask, Lord, help me. Let circumstances adjust to accommodate my presence. And I see this prayer literally come to pass. Why wouldn't I be able to trust God for something bigger? In quotes. Because I have yeah. a track record. Even this thing that seems not important. He did it. How much more life and death situations. And so this sure, is something sure. that I really wanted to, you know, bring to sure. bear as we talk about this subject. Sure, sure. That's powerful. That's powerful. You see, nothing is too little mm. to be presented before God or to right. be prayed about. Right. You see, God cares about every little detail about us. Mm. You see, the Bible even says that our hairs are even numbered. Right. God knows the number of hairs on our head. Mm. We ourselves cry, we will not bother no, 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 counting no. the hair. <laughs> <laughs> we will not bother doing that. Mm. But God says that I know, I know the number of the so God can tell you that you have 2 million hairs, mm. 2 million, 587,005 <laughs> hairs. Right. God can give you the accurate number. Mm. You know, it means that God is interested about every little detail. That's right. You see, that is why the Bible said that God formed us. You see, God didn't just command us. He took time to form us. 
So he is mindful of every little detail mm. about us. He's intentional so anything about us. That, yes. So everything that we need, whether we can do it or not, we must place it before God. He's a prayer answering God. And he right. will do it. He's a father. He's our everything. He's our friend. He's our father. He wishes that men come to him at all times. Mm. As a parent, me, I've been a parent. So, mm. you know, I know. The father's when, not talking. Uh -huh. when your child comes to you that I will drink water sometimes as human sometimes it will be <laughs> annoying sometimes right. but you see God is not annoying mm. he wants especially when we keep place. coming for the same thing keep coming and yeah. you are busy with something it, it's irritating yes. <laughs> yeah but God is never busy for us right you see that's the difference between us and God mm. but sometimes you see when you are there alone and your children maybe your son or your daughter comes around you He's fondling you. He wants to sit on your lap. He wants to jump on you. He wants to do this, do that. You see, you feel happy. Right. And you feel proud. At least my son, my daughter is playing around me. It's mm -hmm. fun. So that is the kind of relationship that God wants us. He's mindful of every detail about us. And mm -hmm. he wants us to always draw nearer to him. He's a prayer answering God. If you have not tried him before, I am admonishing all of you, whoever is listening, mm. that God is a prayer answering God. Just mm. pour out your heart to him. Just speak to him anytime. He is attentive to our prayers. His ears are always open for our prayers and he will answer you no matter how small or how big it is. Right. You know that the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and its mm. fullness thereof. So God is in charge of everything. Mm. The earth is the Lord and its fullness. Everything that is in the world, it belongs to God. So right. whatever thing that you need, as long as it is earth related, mm. he will give unto you. As long as it is heaven related, mm. he will give unto you. Because it is not only the earth, but also the heaven For is sure. also belongs also belongs to God. Yeah. So we must ask God and keep that relationship. You know, scripture says that, and this is the confidence we have that when we pray, he hears us. And you know, sure. once we know that he hears us, then we also understand that we are going to receive you know what we've asked for in prayer and sure. one thing i want us to also take note of is that it isn't just you know praying all my experiences with god sometimes like in terms of he answering even my most stupidest prayers i actually expect <laughs> like i've prayed the prayer and i'm expecting that it will be done i don't just pray mm -hmm. and walk like nothing has been said and so sure. we must believe what we have said in prayer and look forward to God doing that for us. That, so that when it comes, we can identify and note that this is God. This is not me. Yeah. I prayed and he has heard me. Even the things that we do not pray about, he does them for us. How much more the things that we've actually taken time to speak to him about. So this yeah. really is about being conscious of the things that we even say. You see, when we pray and then we expect we put ourselves in a position where we receive the prayers because if we do not expect we just go about doing things but if i expect i'm walking and i'm like okay at any point in time god can do what i've asked for so i'm positioning i'm preparing myself to receive answers to the prayers that i've prayed and so sometimes believers we pray and then now when we receive answers the, the answers are like threats the thing looks so scary in our faces because we didn't prepare or position ourselves to receive what we have prayed for and so at that sure. moment, someone else <laughs> grabs that opportunity or someone else grabs that answer because we couldn't even recognize that this is God. And so let me hold on to it. And you know, the sure. enemy or the devil also prides himself around like the angel of light. And so you can speak something and pray something and he can also present that thing to you, but a fake. And you may go for it because as we mentioned earlier, prayer is based on relationship. If you do not know how or the very nature of your father, the one whom you speak to every day, you ask for certain things. And earlier we we're talking about sometimes God answering prayer is wait a while. And sometimes too is a no and sometimes it's a yes at that moment. So if it's a wait a while and you do not know how your father has been relating to you, his nature, his character, the enemy or the devil can bring certain things, the same thing. And it really looks good and appealing. And you know, the devil doesn't tempt us with things that outside of our needs then that wouldn't be a temptation and so no. he will look at those things and present a, a fake or a double of what you've prayed for of the original and if you do not know you're going to go for that so to what i'm saying the point really is that we should be expectant when we pray and how to detect that this is a prayer that god is answering or this thing that has come as a result of my prayer 
it's actually the real deal it's not a fake that is going to lead me into something destructive in the end sure 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 i'm going to summarize everything that we've said okay so we are talking about yes god answers prayers and sometimes we need to approach you know the throne room of grace with you know the posture of our heart has to be a surrendered life we need to surrender our heart to him that when we go into the place of prayer god puts his desires in our hearts then we even desire those things more and then when when we pray those things god hears us and as we are developing our relationship with him you know we get to the point where we know that i mean even the little things that we we do not care about or people do not care about god cares about and so we walk in that expectation of god answering our prayers and you know there's this um joseph in the bible sometimes okay. when i when i really um think about his story and everything regardless of everything that he is going through the ups and downs and bible still says that wherever he was whatever he was put in charge of you know the thing prospered the thing went on very well because god was with him and even to the point where you know he had a gift even in prison the guy knew the god he served he didn't relax when someone would say he's been in prison for that long and it would be like god has not answered his prayer i'm sure he would be praying that i mean something should happen so that he will get out and he gets the opportunity the people that work in the king's palace are also put in prison with him he um, interprets dreams by god's grace interprets their dreams and then they get back and they even forget about him <laughs> you know but he didn't remain like that he still yeah. maintained that posture of I'm willing, I'm ready to receive whatever God you have for me at the right timing. And so sure. when the time was ripe, it was God that reminded all these people that there was someone that helped you. And when the time was ripe, Joseph was still able to rise up to the occasion because I believe that he still maintained that relationship with God where he could hear him. And so when it was necessary for him to use his gift um to interpret the dream, he was able to go to his father and his father released the response quickly for him. And so this is something that yes I I wanted to add up even as we sum up. So in conclusion um what would you say to someone listening to us who is like god are you are you really like are you real why is it that everything is happening for people you know sometimes when you listen to people's um testimonies and people's yes, yes. walk with god sometimes you become um discouraged or let's say you become sad because you're like why is it not happening for me Why am I praying and things are not happening for me? So if someone is in this state, what would you speak? You know, what life would you speak into the person right now? Um what I would say is that from all that we have said, we said that God is a prayer answering God. Right. And whoever comes to him with a faithful heart or with a heart of faith, with faith in him, you must believe. You see, the Bible talks about those who comes to God must believe that he is. Right. You must not doubt God, the presence of God. You know, some people go to God, but they still doubt. They still have alternatives. That if God does not do, I have my own thing. <laughs> I have my own way. Right. You know, that kind of attitude. And you may not receive answers based on those kind of things. Mm. But if God expects us to completely rely on Him, that if you can totally rely on Him without any other option. that god is only my option god will answer your prayer because he says that the earnest expectation of the righteous will not be cut off so right. god yeah god will not cut your expectation short god will make sure that as long as you trust in him he will do it for you god doesn't have favorites mm. you know, whoever shall call upon the name of the lord the bible say that he shall be saved right so you see the way god will respond and the timings that god will respond to your prayers compared to others may, might be different mm. others may be sharing their testimonies today but your own is coming tomorrow right god is not through with you yet mm. don't give up on god god is not through with you yet your time is coming you see joseph when he had the dream that his his brothers were going to bow down to him and then looking at that time he was about 17 years mm. and then to so the time that he was appointed as a prince in egypt mm. He was 30 years. Look at the right. age yes. difference. The, the number of years. It was about 13 years. Right. It was about 13 years. And God made that dream come to pass. And the amazing thing is that his brothers at first they said that look at the dreamer. Let us kill him 
so that we will see what will come out of him. You see, the brothers wanted to kill him and to destroy the future. But the time came that the brothers themselves said that they just came to his presence and then they bowed before him right. that we are your servant. Mm. They didn't say we are your brother. We are your brother. <laughs> they say that we are your servant. Yeah. We are your servant. Fulfilling so it means that whatever God has said concerning your life, if you give yourself time, it will come to pass. Mm. You see, the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, he said that write the vision and make it plain. He said that right. the vision is for an appointed time. Right. Even though it tarries, wait, it will come to pass. I don't know who is trying to give up on God, but I'm trying to tell you that whatever God has said concerning your life or whatever you have prayed to God about, the vision is for an appointed time. Mm. The Bible said that even though it tarries, wait. That is the condition. He said mm. that wait in God for it will surely come to pass. Your right. expectation will never be cut off. And God is coming through for somebody. I see God responding to someone's prayer. And I see God attending to some people right now. Even now, as I speak, I see God in a haste to release answers to some prayer. Because the entrance of thy word has given light. Mm. And God is responding to some people right Amen. now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that may God hear your prayer even if your voice is not heard in the presence of God or in the corridors of heaven, I pray that the angels of God will amplify your voice. Amen. Whatever way we pray, may the angels of God carry your prayer to the presence of God and bring your answers back to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> this one, I don't say anything. We are done for today. <laughs> so. <laughs> we are done for today. Thank you so much and God bless you for point out yourself once again on on today's episode Thank i believe you. so much that it will bless many lives god bless you sure 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 thanks for listening today i hope this has inspired you if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the podcast so you do not miss an episode i hope to meet you again next week right here on the business of everyday podcast See you.